It lasted about 1971. So when did this start? In 68, uh, 69, I guess, wasn't it? So it lasted about three years. Um, Jim went to the West Coast to, you know, try to get into uh, television out there as a cameraman, which he did. Became an NBC sports cameraman. Do you know what the shoulder cam, the mini cam thing? Did the golf tournaments, football, and all that, guys. And then uh, my contract terminated with um, KSN, and that was it. And after he'd gone, why we didn't bother to do it, of course. I didn't want to find a new Rodney anymore. We got real good ratings on uh, KSN. Uh, cake, it wasn't sophisticated. In those days, it wasn't as sophisticated, you know, I mean, like it is now. I mean, you have a, how many do you deliver with people with three moles on their face now, you know? But um, back in those days, but we got uh, tremendous demographics uh, at KSN. It was like 33%, uh, uh, 11 to 18, 33% of the uh, viewing audience was uh, 18 to 35, and then 33% thir was uh, from uh, 35 on up, you know? Uh, really good demographics, tremendous demographics. Of course, your total households are down at that time of night. Anyway, viewers, the sets of use are way down. But uh, we, we dominated. I mean, Cake and um, 12 were running movies, and uh, the total of the two of their two metro points didn't equal ours at that time. I had two. One was the trip to the moon. The other one was the uh, making a monster, where we made the monster. And uh, decided we despaired of all the latex phony looking creatures that we see in the movies, so we were going to make a genuine monster, Rodney and I, and then uh, go through all the rigmarole, and we finally wind up, and we have the operating table out there, and the cloth over it, and the two poles sticking up with the, what do you call them, where the electricity jumps between them, had them up there, and we were in Dr. Smocks and mask. I had a mask on my face, he did too, but it was over his eyes, and I made him straighten. Anyway, we go through all the rigmarole and throw the switch, and we were going to do all the surgery before we throw the switch, and we had a Texaco road map, and that's how we were going out. We were connecting the main arteries and from his Tucum carry down to his El Paso and, and things like that, this Texaco road map. Then we threw the switch, and the electricity went like this, you know. And he's supposed to come to life, and uh, threw back the thing over him, and here are two hamburgers and an order of french fries sitting there smoking and uh, I am just am disgusted that that's all we came out with and Rodney starts smelling it and starts eating it. Of course, I'm horrified when he eats it, destroying our offspring like that cannibalism. But uh, the final shot was I decided to partake of a little extremity here and picked up a French fry and that was a fade out, you know, I'm having a good time. That was, that was a, fun, a fun one to do. Had a good ending. Of course, the landing on the moon where we took on our rocket ship and crashed through a house roof of a house and we we're supposed to go into the moon landed in a bedroom and we see ourselves in the mirror of a dresser and we think they're moon people and i'm trying to communicate with them like you know how we have come over the great forge you like they did in the old western it is kind of a kick <laughs> oh just two i had published two short stories i had published in f magazine science fiction magazine one called uh, one martian afternoon the other called the tape jockey oh that's ancient history that goes way back to uh about 19 uh, 51, 52, somewhere along there. Um, one Martian afternoon was, I was under the influence of Bray Bradbury at that time, so it's very Bradbury-like, you know. I don't know. I don't know whether I want to go through that again. You know, I've got a whole bunch of scripts. I've got about 52 scripts that I've kept. And I'm not really a, a guy to keep memorabilia, but I don't know why I kept them, but I kept them. Just, I guess, to get them out once in a while, read them or something. I'd, uh, it's hard to say. It's really hard to say. If they wanted to, I suppose, we would have a, a look, search for Rodney or something like that and maybe have it on. But we didn't realize back then what a remarkable thing the Leahy intros were. And so what you're about to see is the only surviving intact nightmare intro with Tom Leahy as the host and Lee Parsons as Rodney from near as we can figure out, 1959. If any of you have any Leahy material, we'd sure like to hear from you. Good evening. <laughs> the persistent monsoon that moans in the night, its breath a searing flame from the bowels of the underworld, carries on its breast an urgent plea from the quintillions of lost souls that roam the shadow world of that dark dimension. And this message vibrates serpentine-like up a royal, 
across desolate wastelands, through the oily waters of the amphibian-infested swamps, over the crest of the ice-capped peaks, and down to the blasted hearth to shriek in our attentive audio receptacles. <laughs> that the hour for nightmare is once again at hand. <laughs> and what a succulent morsel of good fortune that we were ever at the ready for such a thing, video thieves. <laughs> for a real blood eyeser, bone brittler of a cinema is about to flicker to life <laughs> on your television screens. <laughs> it is called The Frozen Ghost. And guess who stars in it? Morris? <laughs> no. Baylor? No. <laughs> but I'll give you a little hint. If a thing is frozen, it is bound to be stiff. Now, who is the stiffest actor in the universe? Huh? <laughs> right! <laughs> Lon Chaney Jr., the most horrible horror thespian ever to dawn grease paint of unearthly hue and plastics of unnatural born. <laughs> By the warlocks of Wapsahatchee, what are you doing, Rodney? Well, you rude Ralph Goodell. Riley, turn that blasted thing down. You hear me? What is this? What the have you capitulated to the adolescent philosophy of rebellion without cause? Have you? <laughs> well, it serves you well enough, Rodney. You're getting so blasted, show offish about everything. <laughs> now, you just plop your young flanks down on that chair a minute, fresh sprig. It's time you and I had a monster to monster talk. Straight from the shoulder, so to speak. <laughs> Anatomically, that is. <laughs> Let me confide in you, good girls. <laughs> Has ever a bond of amigo ship ever known such continual assault and strain wrought by this callow clog's vacillating taste? <laughs> oh, it is indeed a caution, <laughs> and it requires the most assiduous of direction to lead him from these extremist tangents. <laughs> well, while I map my campaign, you troop bivouac by your TV sets <laughs> to deceive the first act. Oh, the frozen ghost. Ghost. Well, that's it, folks. Thanks for watching, and thanks to Tom Lee for some golden memories. And keep your eye on this space. We just may be back someday to remember Major Astro. Go on. Wave 99.